Lawrence Meeting of the Pugilist Place. We're here with Virgil Ortiz. How you doing, Virgil? I'm pretty good, here. Yeah. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. The last time I got the chance to speak with you, it was in preparation for Brad Solomon around uh, just before Christmas. How were your Christmas tamales? Oh, man, they were awesome. <laughs> I ate a lot. I can't even tell you how much I ate because they were really good. Just ran through them? Yeah, I just ran through them, basically. Red or green? Green tamales. Green? But I also like the, the rajas con queso. No, those are bomb. You know what? It's, it's the best time of the year. Yeah. Um, first question I want to ask you, huge boxing event. So I know we're here for you and your big event coming up, big boxing event past weekend. What did you think of the Fury Wilder fight? Man, it, it was crazy because I did, I did not think that uh, Fury was going to beat him. I didn't think he was going to stop him. Uh, so that was... <laughs> I got no words for it. Honestly, I thought Wilder was going to... I had no doubt in my mind Wilder was going to win. People were asking me, uh, I'm going to bet on him. Who should I bet on my like, dude? Just go for Wilder. Like, he's going to win. But... I made everyone like lose money, I guess. But <laughs> did, did you watch that in Riverside? I watched it, yeah. That's great. To be a fly on the wall in a tra big time training camp mm -hmm. with a bunch of big time boxers, yeah, that's got to be interesting. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. Um, and what I think is a good thing is hopefully that that can set a precedent. You are a fighter who could you know benefit from working across the Golden Boy, working with PBC. Oh yeah. To, to get for access sure. to those fighters. Hopefully, it's a good thing for the future. Um, so speaking of well, the welterweight division. I know you don't like to call anybody out. I know you're like, hey, just line up whoever's in front of me and I'll take care of that first. Who, because because you're so talented, is there just anybody that a dream match that you would like to test your skills against in the welterweight division? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've told uh, numerous people this. Uh, it's, it's with Earl Spence. You know, I, used, I, I grew up with him. I used to train with him in the same gym. Uh, we've had the same trainer for a little bit. And, you know, I was 10 and he was like 18, 19. So... It would be really cool if, if I got to fight him at the Cowboys Stadium. Now, now, then again, you know, people take this the wrong way. Like, oh, I want to be him. I want to fight him. No, it's it's uh, it's just a fight that I think would be good for the DFW. Uh, I'm sure that he would like to fight too. And uh, I'm just waiting for the day that it happens. Yeah, and that, I mean, that would just be a great fight for boxing in general. Yeah. You're, you're exactly right. Stuff gets, stuff gets mixed up a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you had a tremendous 2019. You, throw, you knocked out three previously unknocked out or unstopped uh, fighters. How do you top that in 2020? By fighting better names, definitely. Uh, th those names were very, uh, how do you say, uh, there's a word for it. I can't think of it right now. But uh, those names were very good names to fight against. And to not, to be able to say that I knocked them out, it's, it's very, uh, how do you say, it's the same word I'm thinking of. I can't, no, no. I can't even say it right now. You get but, in front of a camera and then, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I said, uh, the only way to top that is to, to fight even better people and do the same thing with them. And just keep moving up. Yeah. Um, and, and, well, and then this is what uh, this is what Samuel Vargas has for in store mm -hmm. for you. But you were at the fight last weekend, um, or two weekends ago, for Ryan Garcia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alexis Rocha fought the, the common opponent. Oh, yeah. Last yeah. And I think a lot of people looked and said, Man, we need to move that win up in Virgil's column yeah. because of you know how you easily dispensed of him. Mm -hmm. um, when, when did you find out as a fighter that you just had incredible power? Um, I've, I've had many showcases of like like power. I would stopped someone or something like that. But I think the main one was probably in the amateurs when Golden Boy discovered me. Like the the greatest, I, I got so lucky to have my greatest win of my amateur career in front of the Golden Boy people, in front of Eric Gomez and uh, Rolando. It, that was extremely lucky, and I'm glad that they got to see that because if they didn't see that, I most likely would not be here wow. right now. Timing is everything. And when you see it, when you see greatness, it's you can't deny it. You're like, that's mm -hmm. different than everything else I see. Yeah. Um, so speaking of your development, Samuel Vargas, why is he the right opponent at this point in your career to take you to the next level? You know what? He's a, he's a very uh, durable opponent. Uh, I've read that he's, he wants to take me uh, deep waters. He wants to give me a war. Which uh, I, I guess you can say I haven't been in a in a real war yet, where I had to leave everything out there. But you know, I do that in sparring all the time. You know, uh, I don't back down. Uh, I'm gonna show the people what I'm made of, and they're gonna see. What's that like at RGBA? Like, I mean, like you mentioned, in sparring, people would pay money to watch those yeah. sparring. That, that sparring. Well, what's it like to be all champions and contenders? It's just great talent. Mm -hmm. Man, it's it's very uh, how do you say it's it's competitive. Everyone wants to be the best at, at what they do. So, you know, we're 
we're silently competing with each other. Whether it's hitting the bags and you hear someone hitting it hard, so now you're hitting it harder, and then they hear you, then now next thing you know, we're, we're all training our asses out. And it all feeds on itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I think why you're intriguing to a lot of people, because not only are this you're this knockout artist, but you also have these interests outside of boxing that are unusual for a boxer, right? Your musical interests and all sorts of different things. Have you ever given any thought to what you would be doing if you were not boxing? I have, and I have been asked this question. It's kind of hard because I would be in school for sure. What, what I want to do in school, I'm not sure. But with, with the way I'm going right now, after boxing, I want to be a cross-country coach because that, that's what I love. So you want to be a teacher and a cross-country yeah. coach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. did, you did that in high school? I did cross-country in high school, yeah. Wow. Why, so why cross-country not boxing, for instance? Um, I just feel like there's more boxing. You're, I mean, you do have teammates, but when you're in the ring, you're alone. In cross country, it's a team effort. You know, it's it's like golf. Like the low score wins. So you know, you have to push your teammates in practice. You have to push them in the race. Uh, you know, the bus rides to the to the cross country meets, man. Those are everything to me. And eating together afterwards, it like the whole thing as a whole was, it meant a lot to me. Wow, that's fascinating. Last time I talked to you, I asked you uh, what you did in Riverside for fun, and you said. Like nothing, there's nope. nothing to do. <laughs> Run, I think is what you said. Yeah. Have you found anything yet? Not yet. Uh, I, I'm still doing the same thing. Sometimes I play with the guitar or the piano, or I play PS4 for a little bit, then I get tired of it. You gotta find something so that yeah. us Riversiders can like go, hey, you know what? That's what Virgil's doing. Yeah. Do you, do you ever train at Mount Rubido? You know where Mount Rubido is? No, I don't. I don't. Okay, it's like in the downtown area. Some other professional fighters uh, okay. train up it. Um, and how about a nickname? Are any closer to a nickname for you? Uh, not yet. No, I I've had some people throw some suggestions at me, but it's if you're throwing suggestions at me, then you know it, it has to be given to me for like something special, almost like it has to mean something, not just because someone gives it to me, you know? Yeah, it, it, it has, has to mean something like organic. And yeah, you're a deep cat, Virgil, and as well as a, as well as a dapper dresser. <laughs> Thank you so much for the time. Why should fight fans follow? Uh, excuse me. Why should fight fans watch your fight on March 28th? Uh, which will, it'll be in Inglewood, California. Why should they watch? Well, first of all, it's going to be a very good fight. You know, uh, two people who want to be a world champion. Uh, I've seen him fight before. He he definitely throws. He stays in the pocket, and he he's he's ready to give me war, and I'm war ready. War tees. We're we're excited for it. Thank you so much for the time, Virgil. We appreciate it as always. Thank you. Thanks, sir.